Hello everyone, welcome to the cockpit of the C-172 at Ara. We are going to get airborne shortly. As you can see, it's very early dawn, 6.30 or so a.m. And I'm using IVAO today, so we may see some human traffic whilst we go. Once airborne, we'll be turning right very slightly onto 117 and making the trip in an southeasterly or east-southeasterly heading. So let's start going through the checks. Brakes are on here. Battery can go on for the minute. And we'll just check the mixture is full lean, which it is. A little bit of throttle just there. And we'll turn the fuel pump on and rich the mixture until we get flow. Slightly erratic looking flow, but we've got flow nonetheless. So now we lean the mixture and fuel pump off. At least we've got some fuel in the tanks now. Right, very easy start procedure, as we've discovered. Okay, we've got a flooded engine, but I think I just left the uh, fuel. left the fuel pump on a little too long there but it's okay hasn't done any harm except for a thousand rpm mixture full rich and we can turn the alternator on as well just holding it a thousand rpm and we'll turn our external lights and things on so beacon landing light taxi light nap light and strobe no need for the Pido heat today because it's quite warm, but we are going to have to wait some time for the fuel temperature to come up. We're sitting below the green at the moment, although it's rising at a visually appreciable rate, so it doesn't look like we're going to have to wait too long. Whilst we're waiting, we'll get the radios on, and I want to tune to 1135 on the 1133. Okay, let's just check that that is in fact the correct. Yes, 1133. So that's the correct channel on the radio. I do need to just adjust my view slightly here as well. It's just a little bit off center. I'll keep the flashlight on so long as it's dark just so that we can easily see the instruments and whatnot. How's my fuel uh, oil temperature rather? Still not quite in the green. Okay, well, we'll use the opportunity here to do a quick mag check. Excellent. And just checking again that we've got a thousand RPM. Heading on takeoff will be 117. I might as well set that now. Let's go to about there, yeah, 115. That'll do for now. We'll fine tune that once we're up. Everything else is ready for us to get airborne here. Flaps are in the up position. So basically, let's just keep an eye on that fuel flow. I could lean the mixture out, which will probably just heat us up a little bit quicker less fuel going in there so it's not going to be it's doing its cooling action okay we are now in the green so we can in fact take off very well no clearance for takeoff required no taxiing required we're on the threshold that's because this airfield is another one of these ones in x plane 11 where there are no uh, no ramps available or anything it just spawns you either at the center of the runway or at the threshold so i've chosen a threshold and we're on runway one zero, as you can see. Brakes off. And we'll start rolling. And of course we've got the old horrific ground handling to deal with. Touch of rudder and away it goes madly, but oh, it's really, really difficult to steer this aircraft. Okay, that'll do. Just a little 
little touch on the nose to bring it off. I don't want to bang the tail wheel. And we're airborne. Confirming the flaps are up again. Okay, I've got a bit of nose up trim. It's a bit much. Nose is desperately trying to climb. Going to go for three and a half thousand feet. Flight level three is my flight plan flight level. So heading east will take the 500 above. Quite a pretty view. Now let's turn on to 117, well clear of the field, 2,500 feet, coming up on 3,000 now. Take that for a heading. It's a little bit further right than we need to be. Seven. Holding RPM on 2400, that'll be okay. And we've got a roadway by the looks of things, tracking on the same heading. So similar to the last flight, also had a roadway. A couple of hundred meter, uh, feet to go and then we'll level off. That'll do nicely. Let's just get the nose level. And autopilot, so heading nav and altitude. Hold the wall, please. And we're veering off to the left here for some reason. So I'm just going to arrest that. I need you to hold that heading if possible. Okay, well, for some odd reason, my autopilot is sending me way off in the wrong direction here. Blimey. This is the autopilot going absolutely crazy. Okay, mate, what's wrong with you? Let's just go for heading. Okay. Right, I think we've finally got that autopilot resolved. <laughs> that was insane. Okay, we could have damaged the aeroplane if we carried on fiddling around like that. But we've managed to solve our problems. Now we can turn all these various things off that we don't need anymore. Should have done this right after takeoff, but never mind. So heading is uh, 123. We'll bring that left onto about 115 because I have to correct now that we've probably oversteered. If you hear the odd clinking sound, that's because I've got a, uh, I've got a beer here, and uh, it's probably it's clinking against my various pieces of hardware as I try to navigate the glass around my control column. I do not endorse flying and drinking. However, this isn't really flying, so we can 
happily enjoy a beer. For the record, I'm drinking the Wittenburger Assam Bock, which is a very dark uh, dunkles, and it has apparently um, some sort of Assam tea in the process. I'm not sure if it's the casks or... I don't know. I didn't really read too much about it, but it's one of my favourite dark beers, and seeing as we're going into winter now, I thought it only appropriate that I switch over to the dark beers for the winter period. I'm also drinking out of a large Abendsberger Dunkel glass, which isn't really shaped for sitting at the PC with uh, various bits of flight some hardware sticking out in all directions. Probably should have got myself a more suitable drinking vessel, but oh well. I'll just have to put up with it. Okay, tracking on one one nine still, so we're gonna be too far to the south. Gonna have to correct quite a few degrees left. And really we can follow this highway, which is pretty handy. You can see it disappearing off there. This is going across the Saudi desert. There's a crap load of traffic. You can see how much traffic there is. I expect in real life there would be a one car every two or three hours. Or a few trucks perhaps. Time for a T's and P's check. And everything looks fine here. going to bring up the IVAO plugin so we can look at the TACAN, TACAS. Okay, so there's no one showing up. Which is fine. get various bits of information from this IVAO plugin, none of which we're going to refer to here. I've noticed I'm up over at 4000 here, which is 500 feet higher than my flight plan, so I'm just going to actually drop down, and I'm going to do that by pulling the throttle. And let the aircraft descend on the basis of low throttle until I get below 3600 and then we will just throttle back up. It'll take us 10 minutes to drop. It's probably a bit naughty. Toggle the plug-in back off. You can see the colours changing now. We're going into the sort of from the purple hues into the yellow hues. Might as well take a bit of an external look. It's a pretty view out there. I'll have to add some passengers one day. Not sure if it's possible. Okay, let's check the map. Well, no, I don't need to check the map because I know we're going to be slightly south of my desired heading. 
I'm going to bring us a couple of degree, degrees left a bit more. So distance from our takeoff airfield has now just kind of gone 18 nautical miles. So do the math, we've got a long way to go. Altitude's just approaching 3600 now, so I'm going to throttle back up. And we'll go with 2350. And I have that altitude, please. Let the autopilot do the work from here. Now we can probably start just ever so slightly turning back on towards 117. RPM is a bit too high. Okay, just above 3500 now. Dolphin diving a bit up and down about the desired altitude. Autopilot's just trying to catch up with its own lag a little bit. It's a very, very attractive morning out there. Over a very, very dull landscape, but it's actually a good time to fly over a landscape like this. And here we go, the sun is just coming up above the horizon too. That looks wonderful. Look at a lovely sunrise this morning, flying directly into it, or just off centre from it. It'll be interesting to see how much glare we get, if any. Shame we don't see any colour on the clouds, any. Red and orange and yellow. Right, as we tend to do, T's and P's, everything's in the green. Oil pressure's on the top side of the green. 
And I can probably lean the mixture a little bit now actually because we've got a fraction of height. I think we need 4,000 actually so I might just leave it full rich. I'll bring it back a touch, save some fuel. Hopefully it won't get too hot. We are motoring along with some good airspeed. Journals again. Oh, we do have some colour on the um, on the clouds. There we go. That looks really nice. Never noticed that before. Okay, back in the cockpit. We've got half of the orb of the sun now above the horizon. Local time 0648. Still got the highway down here too. Traffic. One thing I really love about this is how they render the lights way off into the distance in X Plane 11. They're certainly not shy about having lights from the ground show at long ranges. Let's go back outside, I think. It's really quite a lovely view.
So I guess we can say now the sun is up. Direct sunlight on the aeroplane just yet. Not quite. You probably won't see it until the landscape starts getting, getting lit up. So I think the flashlight can come off now. Hardly making a difference in the cockpit, so that could definitely come off. We've got good at external lighting now. There's a wonderful reflection on the cowling just there from the sun. Another lovely view. This sim can be a real startler sometimes with the visuals. Time for T's and P's. Plenty of fuel, nicely balanced too. Still holding our altitude. Check it on 118. Let's pull it back to 117. Distance from takeoff point now coming up for zero nautical miles. And we'll make that one third of the journey complete. Actually, four five is going to be one third. See the autopilot just trimming away there to keep the airplane steady. Beautifully modded cockpit you have to zoom in right the way till about here before you start really seeing the pixelation and uh, at this level here everything looks fantastic Back seats are all lit up nice and pink from the low sun ahead of us. Only one thing I would like to see a bit more of is uh, strong sun glare. I think I'm looking at this sun directly I'd like to see uh, the view wash out a bit more unless you're wearing sunglasses of course which you can do and then it'd be nice to see much sort of brighter glary reflections that are direct sunlight reflections I think the next well perhaps not the next generation but two generations time when we start getting ray tracing in these flight sims probably looking at five to ten years time before it happens then we'll get some really spectacular sights Right, we'll take a first look at the map. And we've been doing a relatively good job of tracking this heading. And you can see there we are about a third of the way. So 
it says we have 3728 MSL. What I'm going to do is adjust my altimeter to show 13. 3728. So we'll quickly. Oops. No, 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 no. What I want to do here is use this to adjust my altimeter. 3699. Off by about it's off by about a hundred still. Three six eighty. Three six sixty. Okay, it says three six fifty there, and it's showing about the same there. So now I'm I'm AMSL. MSL on my altimeter, thereabouts 28. I need to go perhaps two more notches up. 3,000, yeah, bang on. Okay, so I'm on MSL now on my altimeter, which means if I hold 3,500, I will actually be 3,500 above mean sea level. So the flight level is just a little bit more accurate. Cheating a little bit there, using the digital the digital map display to get my altitude above mean sea level, rather than just calling up for a Q and H or QFE or whichever one it is. So the landscape still looks like it's in shadow, even though we've got the sun up about four or five degrees above the horizon. So I think if we descended down to ground level, the sun would still be perhaps just rising now. You need to see when we start getting sunlight off the ground. I'm actually going to turn the strobe off at this point anyway. It's not really needed. Don't need to charge around the sky with the strobe flashing bright white, do we? Oh, there's some nice colour in the cloud. Look at that. Boah. It just makes me want to go external views. That cloud there in particular, that is a very bright orange or bright yellow. See what we look like in the other direction here. No clouds behind us, unfortunately. I love the engine tone changes. I 
Well, it's not going to be easy finding a nice image to use for the screenshot for this video because there are so many beautiful views throughout the entire flight. We'll see what we can come up with though. If it wasn't for the beautiful view of the sky, this would be another incredibly boring trip. The landscape has nothing to offer in terms of interest. We just got to get through these trips across the desert though. And then we hit the coastline and we'll be following the coast um, along the Gulf, possibly crossing over to Iran and the narrow point near the Straits of Hormuz and then across central northern India. Should be quite interesting. So at least until we get to India, I think we've got a couple of thousand, or well, a thousand or so kilometers of coastline we're gonna be following. So we'll probably do some slightly lower altitude flights down at about 500 feet or so, and uh, have a look at the coastlines. I think that'll be quite nice. So fuel has moved down now. We're up near 15 on each tank where we started. We're down at about 13 now, so we've lost a little bit of fuel, but certainly we'll make the remaining 90 or so nautical miles. Probably end up with about six gallons left, seven gallons left, I would expect, in each tank. Landscape is still in shadow down there. It's a bit odd actually. Some real otherworldly colours going on in these clouds. That's almost green on the right there. A bit more natural looking. So we should have some nice clouds behind us now too. There we go. I've taken a little bit of colour. That's a little bit extreme. I'm going to adjust left a couple of degrees. Wow, we can see a bit of desert texturing now. Dunes. can actually get a bit of an appreciation for how quickly we're moving too. I 
something that's a lot easier to see in a in a simulation on a screen than it is in real life and it's often hard to see the how fast you're moving along the ground especially towards the horizon but in a sim you can kind of adjust your visual origin point like this and you can see the transition across the landscape just as easily as you can close in it's actually quite impressive looking terrain texturing here these are the default game textures I don't have any landscape packs installed and we've got a bit of a town weird grid construction of streets over here in the middle of nowhere just notice we're getting a little bit stuttery too at the moment could just be the video being written it's going to be a big video this is going to be a long one and it's going to be very large so I'm hoping I don't run out of hard drive space before the uh, filming is complete. If I do, I'll have to slice it into two parts. I will certainly not be flying this league again. If the video stops recording, I will simply slice the video into two uploads and make them a little bit more digestible. So there we go, 72 of 144, we are halfway there. Sooner or later I'm going to have to tune my radio into rougher. Let's do that now. So we've tuned into our destination airfield, you can see the flight plan tracking pretty well across here. And there we are. We're almost straight in on this heading, in fact, runway is 1-1, one, one, and we're on 117, so it's going to be a straight in approach, no messing about. Now this flight plan here, that is the actual straight in approach flight plan, that probably takes the heading of the two airfields and just meets them halfway. We're going to be doing a slightly different from that. So we won't be lined up perfectly on the runway. We will be having to make a slight left turn as we get in close. But 
that's not too big a deal. Distance now 70.3 and we're on the 300 radial. We could turn right early and get ourselves onto the 29 radial and that will actually be straight in. I'm very tempted to do that. In fact, I'm going to. I'm going to turn on to about 125. And we'll try and get onto the 29. Yeah, 293, 292-ish radial. In fact, I'm going to turn past 29, uh, 122. 125. I'm going to go to about 128. And we'll try and get onto the radial. 290 to 294 in that range. So what have we got for clouds now? We've got white and pink and all sorts of interesting colours happening really. Directly with the sun behind, they're very white. And then we've got the dark clouds over here which don't have the sun behind them. And then we've got some pink colour. So they're doing a pretty good job of rendering different colours of clouds, but they're still struggling to make it look, um, let's say, hyper-realistic. But they're doing a lot better job than they used to. In fact, these are starting to look, in terms of the way they colour, they're looking better than the third-party plugin stuff I've been using. It's just that the forms of them are a bit weak. more and more of them will start paling out and going white now as the sun gets a bit higher and they'll lose that pink colour. Right, I think what I'll do, I'll lose a couple of feet. to see what it says out. Three, five, forty. Good enough. So what radio are we on now? We've crossed onto the two nine nine radial. Good. You can see from the map there, we're just starting to depart from this direct blue line and we're crossing over to the side of it. And that's because the runway here is offset to the south as well. So to come in straight, we need to be on the radial about 294, 293, I guess, something like that.
Oh, hello. Okay. So the weather's just changed. We're now overcast. So the weather's just been updated. I am using real-time, real-world weather. So it's just run through an update and it's told the game that in fact I've flown into overcast conditions. So suddenly now we're overcast and get a bit of frame tearing all of a sudden. So it's uh, massively affected the way my graphics are rendering going from those clear conditions to this. There you can see the frame tearing there. It's pretty shocking. Which I wasn't seeing before. So I'm going to try and minimize the amount of time I spend moving my head around. At least we have daylight now, so we can see a bit more of the ground. trying to observe some of these textures to see how often or if they repeat. There's these two dark patches, one there and one there, are quite good to use as markers for repetition. But I'm not seeing any repeated over here. Nor there. Grey, grey conditions. Very greeny grey in fact. What we can do here is just check the TACAN, or TCAS rather, I keep going TACAN, TCAS, there's nothing showing here. So we're all alone, up in the skies here over Saudi Arabia, no one on IVAO seems to be flying in the neighbourhood. And we're just coming up on 50, five, zero nautical miles to, to cover in the journey. So coming up on the two-thirds mark now. And having a look at fuel, we have dropped again a bit more. Down at about 12. So we're getting about a gallon every 
30 nautical miles. A gallon on each wing that is, so two gallons total. It's about 15 miles to the gallon. nautical miles too, so it's not even stat miles. Don't know what stat miles and nautical mile conversion rate is. It's not one to one though. No, please don't leave a comment telling me what the conversion rate is. If I wanted to know, I could quite easily look it up on Google. So save yourself. Save yourself the typing. pop outside. Oh, I've got some weird visual artifacts coming off my trailing edges there. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be something to do with condensation because of atmospheric conditions because I'm just below the cloud it looks weird it does not look natural it just looks like a whole bunch of cotton buds being kind of spewed out of the wingtip for some odd reason I think effects like that are best left not doing it all if you're not going to do them right just don't do them at all get a break in the cloud up here. It's quite thin at 11 o'clock. I don't know if that's just because the, the sun is in the background and it makes the clouds look lighter. Or whether there's actually a hole. It kind of looks from this angle like there's a hole in the cloud bank. Yeah, I'm pretty confident there's a hole here. So 
So we may be coming to the end of this overcast cloud bank. Yeah, looks like we're coming to the end of, a, of this cloud. So the sky is just going to change up a little bit here for a moment as we enter the next weather pattern or it updates again and throws up another set of overclass conditions. But yeah, we're just emerging out from under this big thick blanket. I'm just going to stay right underneath it here. Happy not to climb up and through. So 35 nautical miles to go. We're now three quarters of the way there. I think I'm going to descend down to flight level 2, which should be 2,500 feet above mean sea. So let's pull the pull the RPM and throttle back, we'll descend down to 2500 and then we'll throttle back up as we've done previously. Should just go for full rich too as we descend down. Don't want to give the engine a chance to think it's being leaned out. Fuel flow is still, well, fuel reserve rather, it's still just dropping. Everything else is in the green.
shed 300 more feet before I can throttle up again. Right, we're now on the 291 radial, so I'm going to come on to a runway heading at the destination, which is 110. And I think I see lights in the distance. Yep, that looks like the field. So I think I'm going to have to come right a fraction because I'm just off centre already. So we've got visual and we are a long way out. We'll throttle up now. And we'll tell the aeroplane to hold this altitude, which is 2,500 feet MSL. So we'll have we'll be nice and low as we come into the field. It's the reason I've dropped down to flight level. It's because I don't want to be coming in from three and a half thousand feet MSL, which is going to be probably two and a half thousand feet AGL. We can line up from way out here. We need to come right by about fifteen. So I can see an airfield that is 28 nautical miles away. I can see the lights. It's a bit of a bumpy one. three degrees right more okay we're lined up now let's bring it back onto one one zero Straight in from however many million miles away we are, 25 nauticals. It's going to be a long old run. Right, well, we can, we can probably start setting up for landing. Sky is a very grey colour today. There's really no blue in it at all. So, what's our procedure going to be? Are we going to go with it now or are we going to wait till we get to about 10 miles out? I think we should wait till we're 10 miles out. We've got some good airspeed happening here. RPM is hammering away. I'm just going to drop it below 2500. I don't think we need to be really going that quick liable to break something. Certainly looks like we will have more fuel left than I expected. It seems to burn fuel very, very slowly, this aeroplane. I mean, they do, they have dropped since we started, but man, they've hardly dropped more than a couple of gallons. So I'm sure there is a well, I'm not sure because I don't know what the real life figures are, but it just feels like this aircraft does not drink fuel.
Now, can we see the approach lights? Yeah, it says we're too low, which of course we would be. It's a very low angle. Two nine zero radial bang on distance twenty point five nautical miles to go. I think this has been the single longest flight that I've done in this series. And at this point it's shaping up to be one of the single longest flights I will have to do. Anything above about 110 nautical miles is, is pretty tough going actually. It's pretty rigorous effort. So there we are. Heading into the glow of the morning sun, just poking through some clouds here. Pilot's got a moustache, never realised that. I don't know if you can change his clothes and his appearance. I'm not a huge fan of that brown leather jacket. Has he actually got a mow or is it just stubble? I think it's... Uh, it's hard to tell. Could just be stubbly. He's got pretty bad skin. <laughs> uh... So, there's the view from the tailpipe and the airfield up there. We are slightly off centre, but we're going to have to come left again, I think. This is exactly where I'd like to see crepuscular rays. And if we turn on Skymax Pro, we may actually get them. Let's turn on Skymax Pro and you can see the difference it makes. Takes a few seconds to initialize, and the clouds get built. And you can see it's actually placing the clouds all the way down on the deck. So we're actually shrouded in cloud. Now during the day, SkyMax Pro is pretty nice. As you can see, you get the uh, lens flare there as well. I do got crepuscular rays on as well. And we can change the I quite like a high contrast sky. So there we go. Now we're flying with SkyMax Pro, which is nicer during the day. I prefer the stock clouds at night. But I prefer the SkyMax Pro clouds during the day. So there we go, suddenly the weather's changed. And now we are flying along with a uh, pretty horrible lens flare, which I'm going to get rid of. Don't need that lens flare. Let's adjust left. Five or ten degrees left. This cloud is right down. You can see when I move my head, because the clouds are just actually bitmap textures, they're not particulates, they're not particle effects. When I rotate my head, they, the cloud, the angle of the, the bitmap changes. You can see it's almost pointing at me there. And this is where SkyMax Pro has major, major failings. It's just a bunch of semi-transparent textures that are just layered in front of each other. That's a real shame that it does that. So I think I'm going to turn it off. Now if there are other plugins that um, people recommend for the clouds, I would happily consider others. 
Um, as you can see during the day, the default clouds are just ugly as hell. And SkyMax Pro looks visually nice for screenshots, but when you're flying along in the 3D environment, it doesn't really work. It doesn't work at night because the clouds do not go black. They don't uh, lose their luminescence. They stay bright white. So you're flying along at night, pitch black conditions with bright white clouds. And then they do that funny, horrible thing when you turn your head if you've got track IR because they are just flat PNG or bitmaps or whatever they are. Images. Okay, we're going to be lining up shortly. Let's see. I think we'll come two or three degrees right. Got uh, our first white light there. So let's set up for landing. Seatbelts are on. Fuel selector set to both. Engine gauges, T's and P's are all on the green. We've got plenty of fuel. We can go around if we need to. Heading indicators aligned. 109, 109, yes. Altimeter setting. We need the altimeter for the airfield. Three zero one six. Three zero one. Ah, three zero one. That's about there. Oh, actually, three zero one. Ah. If you hit the middle of the button, it resets. With track IR, you have to pause track IR. Right, 3016. That's about right. You have to pause track IR. Track IR. If you accidentally hit the middle of that button, it resets it. Right, we need to come two degrees right. Red is a set. We should be tracking in on 116, which we are. We know. I'm not talking to this um, airfield. Mixture for rich. Autopilot will come off shortly. Let's reduce. And we won't turn the flaps down. Let's get the airspeed down to about 90. So we're still too low. Yeah, let's turn the autopilot off now. So we're flying this. Old girl manually. Yes, it's coming back. Don't want to go below about 20 hundred RPM. Landing light on. Whoops. Trim. Trim before you look down at your gauges, old chap. Good, airspeed's now looking good. In fact, I can give it a bit more, a bit more power. Okay, there's my glide slope. Getting a bit high, so let's bring that throttle back. First notch of flaps can now go in. We are below the safe airspeed for flaps. And we're too high already. Happens very fast getting over that line. First notch, up comes the nose. Yeah, it does feel high. Second notch. Full flap. Okay, so we're on our final approach now. Short final even. Slow. We need just a little bit more airspeed here. No appreciable crosswind. Looks like we'll be able to just roll straight on. And what is that? A taxiway? Yeah. So there's no departures until the end. There are no little bits coming. Oh, there's one halfway down. Let's see if we stop in time to make it to that one. Just 
just trying to get us back on glide slope here. I think we're going to be below it the whole way in. Brake is off. That's critical. It's actually not on my um, landing check here. Brake off, which is weird. It's the official Cessna 172 checklists that I've got downloaded. It's sitting on my tablet next to me here. And there's no mention of brakes off before landing. Well, not that I can see. Okay, we are really, really super high. going to land long. Okay, we're off center a bit too. I've been told off about that from commenters in previous videos. Okay, settle that front nose wheel down. A bit closer to centre from what I'm, I've done in previous flights. Let's try and get the RPM up so we don't sp spoil the uh, spark plugs. Flaps up. We get the taxi lights on here too. Okay, now you can see the aeroplane getting washy because of an apparent lack of willingness to steer properly. So, I can see the exit up on the right. We're going to taxi up to that. Appears to be the only exit we have. I could have almost backtracked and gone off at the start of the runway in less time than it's going to take me to get to here. Looks like we're going to be going downhill. And there we go, exiting right. So once again, coming in far too high. Just have to live with it. Now, there is nowhere to park at this airfield. It's just another one of these generic ones. So I'm going to just stop it here. Just check that there's no human players have joined and by some weird twist of fate have decided to operate from this airfield as well. Nope, none have, so we'll stop there. Put the brakes on. Actually, I'm going to leave the brakes off because we're going to look at the landing now from the external views to see what it looked like and then we'll come back and we'll shut down after that. Here's the approach, so you can see we're basically falling out of the sky at about 20 degrees nose down, <laughs> charging down towards the threshold there. I just let myself get too high again. You see it where well, I managed to salvage anything at the end here. So here we are. Just leveling off a fraction there and going for level flight. A little flare and I just got the rear wheels down I think a fraction before the nose wheel touched so not a terribly bad landing I've certainly done worse and that brings the flight to a close thanks for watching everyone hope that was uh, enjoyable if not rather long and uh, somewhat tedious in fact but we are getting close now to the Gulf so things will pick up we'll have more airfields to choose from shorter flights and uh, more interest interesting scenery and now that I've got IVAO working hopefully that means we might see a bit more traffic see you again soon thanks for watching